All right, and welcome to the Citizens Audit Review and Financial Advisory Committee, otherwise known as CARFAX, presentation on the Pension and Post-Employment Obligations uh, Report uh, to the Board of Commissioners. I'm Bill White. Uh, I have the pleasure of serving Radnor Township as the Finance Director, and I'm here tonight with members of the CARFAX, specifically the Planning Working Group, uh, and we'll get to meet them here in a moment. We're also here with Mr. Bob Tate, who serves Radnor Township as the Assistant Finance Director. Uh, before we get too far into this, CARFAC, in doing this project, also prepared a written report that was submitted to the Board of Commissioners and is now available online. So we recommend uh, that uh, interested parties go and read the written report in conjunction with this presentation, because the written report goes into uh, a lot more detail in some of the areas. Uh, before, we, uh, before we get into meeting the, the individuals who are here with us tonight, I would like to mention that uh, the, the champion of this project was unable to be with us tonight, Jim Bowes, um, but it was his efforts in the front end of this project that really gave it momentum and got, it, uh, got all the parties together so that we could really dig into and learn a lot about this topic and really help the township get the ball rolling, uh, so to speak. So. Uh, Jim was not able to be there tonight, but it was his efforts really that brought this group together and got this report done and submitted. So we'd like to thank and recognize Jim for all his efforts. And someday when the township can say that they have uh, managed these liabilities and are a much better financial spot, it's going to be because of Jim's efforts. So we thank him for that. Thanks, Bill. I'm Carl Bupp, and I've been a resident of Radnor Township for over 12 years. I'm chairman of the CARFAC and have over 25 years of experience in financial operations and planning, including stints as chief financial officer for both a public and private company. I'm Jerry Linden. Uh, I've been a resident of the Bradner Township for coming up on 20 years. And in addition to serving on CARFAC, I was also a member of the Citizens Budget and Advisory Committee, which preceded uh, the CARFAC Committee. Uh, I round out the group by bringing an information technology background with experience in financial information systems and other operational systems for many governments. Thanks, Bill. I'm Mark Blair. My wife, daughters, and I have enjoyed living in the township these past 13 years. I'm a registered investment advisor. I work for Blair Wealth Management, and I'm a graduate of the Wharton School. I'm Bob Tate. I've had the privilege of serving as Radner's Assistant Finance Director since May 1st of this year. I'm a CPA and I've spent the majority of my career working in government and healthcare and I've had the pleasure of being a part of this group and working with CARFAC on this very important project. All right, so, so Mark, for those uh, residents or those who are listening who might not know who CARFAC is, could you please uh, describe who CARFAC is? Sure, Bill. CARFAC stands for Citizens Audit Review and Financial Advisory Committee. The eight volunteers all live in Radnor Township. And in 2011, the commissioners appointed us after an interview process. Uh, two of the members of our team worked on the CB FAC committee that Jerry mentioned earlier, and that's really helpful to have that continuity. Mostly we work with, with the township staff, you all, uh, and the outside advisors, such as the actuarial firm. Uh, our mission is to provide the board with independent financial advice and analysis and to educate the public. CARFAC also serves as an informal audit review committee for the township. Our vision for the township is that it be regarded as on a sound financial footing, able to make and keep its promises, and have the financial flexibility to adjust to a changing environment. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so why when CARFAC was evaluating what projects to work on, why was this one so important to CARFAC? Why look at the township's pension and OPEB obligations? Why OPEB? We noticed a $54 million unfunded OPEB liability on the township's 2011 financial reports. That's a huge number. Uh, for example, that's 87% of all the assets owned by the township. Uh, that would also be 164% of everything that the township spent last year. Um, the kicker was that we learned that to fully fund the annual required contribution would require a tax increase of 22.5%. We decided we wanted to learn more about this large and growing liability. Very good. Uh, now, who is CARFAC trying to reach with this, this presentation? Who is your target audience? Ultimately, it's up to the commissioners to resolve this. 
the townspeople and the employees need to know about it as well because they'll be affected by the decisions that the that our leaders make very good mark thank you uh, one more question for you uh, and that is what is carfax goal with this presentation what are you hoping uh, the messages that folks walk away with we are here to to sound the warning bell uh, we certainly want to address the questions of the commissioners. We also want to inform the employees and the townspeople. We want to help everyone understand the long-term consequences of this. All right, switching gears over to you, Mr. Tate. Uh, knowing that uh, this issue didn't crop up overnight, the township didn't get here overnight, just if you wouldn't mind, provide us a little bit of insight on maybe how the township got here. Bill, that's a great question. Um, to put it in context, there are retirees who started their career with the township back in the 1940s and 50s. They worked for a period of time and they've been retired and receiving their pension and health care benefits uh, for over 35 years. So the promises and commitments to provide for health care in retirement go back many years. It, um, it's a tremendous benefit and that was the model for many years for public service employees. The problem, primarily with respect to OPEB, is that the long-term cost to provide for and to fulfill those promises and commitments to our employees and our retirees was never fully measured, estimated, accounted for, nor properly funded. And in fairness, there was no requirement to do so at any time prior to 2008. In the financial statements for Radnor Township in the past, um, the statement showed health care premium cost for that current year and it broke it out between active and it showed a portion for the retirees. It's only been since 2000, 2008 as a result of a change in financial reporting standards has this liability been estimated, accounted for, and fully disclosed in the financial statements of the township. As the rate of increase in insurance premiums continues to outpace the rate of inflation each year, it becomes more important to address and develop a plan for funding this obligation. As an introduction to the presentation uh, that we're about to transition to, I just wanted to point out from the administration's point of view that the township is required to port, report its annual, uh, its total liabilities in our annual financial report. Those reports are available on the township's website uh, under the finance budget, uh, finance reporting and budget page. So uh, you can always go to that page if you want to try to find those reports. Uh, as we step into this and transition to the slideshow, uh, I'd like to make a summary comment on some of the bigger numbers, which we'll do now. I wanted to briefly touch on this item before we get too deep into the presentation. The unfunded pension, am pension amount comes directly from our 2011 financial report at $22 million. So this, this was calculated by actuarial professionals and ties directly back to our financial report. More importantly, what I really wanted to focus on here was with regard to the unfunded OPEB liability which is shown on this slide at $214 million. The $214 million represents the amount of cash needed to pay for providing post-employment health benefits over the next 30 years. This is different than the amount shown in the annual financial report, which is calculated by actuaries based on a different set of criteria that are unrealistic to Radner's situation. The primary uh, unrealistic difference is that the actuaries assume that Radner has dedicated assets to offset the liability, which is not true at this time. As a result, uh, while accurate from an accounting sense, the amount of the OPEB liability reported in the financial statements at $54 million is artificially low. So CARFAC, in its election to uh, put this information together and report it, elected to use the $214 million, which is a more accurate representation of the liability. So now, let's go to the Carfax portion of the presentation on pension and OPEB liabilities. We're going to start off with Jerry, who's going to talk a little bit about the pension problem. Thanks, Bill. Well, to start, something the public may not know is that in Pennsylvania, each local government creates and manages its own pension plans. This is different than in many other states, where the state manages a combined plan for all local government employees, similar to what the state of Pennsylvania does for the local school districts. Radnor Township maintains two plans, one for police employees and one for civilian employees. These are structured as defined benefit plans, where the retirement benefit is determined based on some pre-established criteria, such as final average salary and years of service, and not by available funding. This can be contrasted with a defined contribution plan, where amounts are set aside during employment and the benefit is determined based on how much funds have been accumulated. The 401k plan that many in the private sector are more familiar with is an example of a defined contribution plan. 
Another important piece of background is that Radnor Township has three employee groups. Two employee groups are unionized, the police, represented by the Delaware County Fraternal Order of Police, or FOP, and civilian employees represented by RATE, the Radnor Association of Township Employees. The third group is administrative employees who are not unionized. Any changes to pension plans and benefits, along with salary and other work provisions for union employees, must be made through collective bargaining. In addition, any changes to benefits are subject to specific state law regarding pensions, as well as general employment and contract law. So now let's take a look at how the plans work. In the course of our project, we work with several of the township's outside professionals. This chart was prepared by the township's actuary, Mockenhoff Benefits, to illustrate how the pension plan works for one employee. First, we'll look at an employee in the civilian plan. Starting at the bottom left, a new employee is hired at a salary of $50,000. Based on the current actuarial review of the plan, the actuary has determined what is called the normal cost of the plan, and based on that has determined that 13% of each current employee's salary should be contributed to the plan, or in the case of this employee, $6,500. That amount is funded from three sources. Civilian employees contribute 5% of salary, or in this case, $2,500. The state of Pennsylvania provides financial support to local government pension plans and currently that is about $3,200 per civilian employee. That leaves Radnor Township to fund the balance or $800 a year, a very manageable amount. So as we move up the chart over the 30 years until the employee retires, the employee and the township along with state support continue to contribute each year's normal cost to the plan. For our new employee, this is actuarially projected to be just over $400,000 in contributions, but with investment earnings will have grown to over $1.1 million when the employee reaches the normal retirement age in 2042. Our employee does indeed retire in this state and begins to collect his retirement benefit, which is 50% of his final average salary at retirement. This is projected to be just over $8,000 per month. It should be noted that this is in 2042 dollars, which would be equivalent to about $3,200 today. It should also be noted that the plan has no cost of living or COLA adjustment, so that the dollar amount will be fixed through retirement and will lose value over time. The employee, now retiree, would be projected to receive that benefit for 24 years, collecting a total of over $2.3 million. Let's look at an illustration for an employee in the police plan. There are several differences in the police plan, recognizing the different demands and benefit needs of a public safety officer. The main differences are a normal retirement age of 50, a disability benefit, and some differences in survivor benefits. Based on these differences, the actuary has calculated an 18.5% of salary normal cost. So for a new employee, police employee hired at a salary of 60,672, the first year normal cost is 11,241. Like the civilian plan, the cost is shared between the employee, the township, and state support. The police plan has a lower employee contribution rate than the civilian plan, and the state contribution per police employee is actually double the civilian amount. The, the net amount for the township to contribute in this case is 2418, higher than the civilian amount, but still quite manageable. Compared with the civilian plan, there are less years as an employee to contribute to the plan and a slightly larger amount required at retirement to fund a longer time of retirement due to the normal retirement age of 50. So next, let's look at the cost of the township of providing these benefits across all employees and how the costs, which were initially thought to be manageable, grew. As mentioned earlier, the township provides defined benefit pension plans. The benefit is fixed, so the township bears all the risks that the earlier actuarial assumptions were realized. Following state law, a periodic actuarial evaluation of each plan is performed. The last valuations were completed earlier this year and reflect the status of the plans on January 1, 2011. The best summary of the financial health of the plans is the funded ratio, or what is the percentage of funds in the plan as required to fund the projected liabilities, with 100% being a fully funded plan. As you can see, our plans were funded at 94 and 82% as recently as 2007, but are now funded at 67 and 57%. The initial assumption may be that this is just due to poor market returns over these four years. However, Radner's funding status is much worse than most other Pennsylvania local governments. 
The State Public Employee Retirement Commission collects and summarizes all of the actuarial, actuarial reports and categorizes them into what are called distress levels, with the table on the bottom right of this chart showing how they are classified. Radner's 2011 valuation placed us in the second distress level, or moderately distressed, and put us in the lowest 11% of plans across the state. Our Carfax subcommittee worked with township administration and our outside professionals to better understand the problem and develop recommendations. Certainly, recent market performance is a major factor, and this last valuation, the township lowered the assumption for future investment returns. But this does not fully explain our funding status when compared with other local governments. What we did identify were an accumulation of benefit changes that are being amortized over time, such as an early retirement benefit in 2007, cases of deviations in the computation of final average salary from what had been projected, and deviations in what the actuaries refer to as experience, such as a greater number of disability retirements than what would be normal experience. Because each local government maintains its own plan, as described earlier, we are subject to more volatility since the risks are spread over a very small pool of employees. To make up for the funding shortfall, the actuary computes what is called the Unfunded Actuarial Accrued Liability, or UAAL. This amount is then amortized over a period of time, typically 15 to 20 years. Now let's look at how the funding issues in our plans impact the township budget and our taxes. The annual amortization payment just discussed is now almost $2.5 million. It's important to note that the underfunding applies to both current employees and current retirees. So it's not just covering the future costs for the 130 current employees in the plan, but also the 116 former employees who are now retirees. If you divide the total amount by the 246 plan members, that's an annual cost of just over $10,000 per member. And unlike the normal cost previously mentioned, it is not shared with the state or employee, but is totally borne by the township. So the township's expected cost to fund pensions, which should have been 446569 is instead now almost $3 million and a substantial part of the township budget. As you can see from the top of the chart, this cost has risen rapidly, and just the increase from our 2012 to 2013 budget of $1.4 million, if covered fully by the real estate tax, would have necessitated a 12% tax increase. The only reason that this is not occurring is that it was offset by increases in business taxes and by expense reductions. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, what would you say are the three most critical points that uh, you want the listeners to take away from that analysis? Well, first, our pension liabilities present a significant challenge to our current and future budgets. Second, it's not just the market. Radner's plans are in the lowest 11% of plans across the state. And third, if you remember back to what I said at the beginning of the presentation, any changes need to be made through the collective bargaining process for union employees. Thanks again, Jerry, and that's actually an excellent segue into the next portion of the presentation, which will cover the committee's analysis on the potential plan changes. Carl, uh, if you wouldn't mind, how about you take us through that, please? Thanks, Bill. As a first step in analyzing potential plan changes, we worked with Radner staff and our outside professionals to conduct a market assessment of how Radner's plans compared with other townships. We want to cover some of the most significant items. First, we looked at the employee contribution rate for police pension plans. The most common rate is 5% of salary. However, Radnor police officers contribute at a 2% rate with an additional 1% paid by a charitable fund drive conducted by the Fraternal Order of Police in which donations are made by Radnor residents and businesses. Less than 5% of the plans we survey had an employee contribution rate of 2% or less. Next, we looked at what is included in the computation of final average salary, which was mentioned earlier as one of the issues with our funding status. There are provisions in the Radner collective bargaining agreements that allow employees to accrue unused vacation, personal, and compensatory time, and at the end of their employment with Radner Township, receive a lump sum payout of this unused time. The issue from a pension perspective is that this one-time payout is included in the computation of the final average salary which is the compensation averaged over the last 36 months of employment. This causes what is referred to as a spike in compensation. And remember, this compensation is used to determine the monthly retirement benefit for life. In our survey, 
Radnor was among only 4% of townships where unused vacation, personal, and compensatory time is used in the retirement benefit calculation. Further, Radnor's pension plans are audited by the Pennsylvania Auditor General to qualify to receive state pension aid. Radnor has been cited in those audits for this practice of including the lump sum payout of unused accrued leave time to calculate retirement benefits, which is considered illegal by the Pennsylvania Auditor General. As mentioned earlier, the police plan includes a disability benefit. Our survey identified differences in the level of this benefit. Again, the normal disability benefit is 50%, which is also the level of the disability benefit for the majority of other plans. Radner's higher disability benefit rate of 70% is only offered by 8% of the plans we surveyed. Similarly, we examined the level of the survivor benefit and found that Radner is in the minority of plans which provide a 100% survivor benefit. To sum this up, CARFAC recommends three primary considerations to manage these long-term obligations. First, bring benefit levels in line with market. Radner is in a positive position where changes can be made to bring the costs down, yet still provide competitive benefits. Second, increase employee contributions to be in line with market. This will help offset a portion of the township costs, bring more buy-in from the beneficiaries of the program while still offering in-market benefits. And third, consider long-term strategies to convert from defined benefit to defined contribution plans. Many private sector companies have moved in this direction to contain costs while still offering a retirement package for their employees. Perhaps public sector employers should consider this same approach. Please refer to the written Township Pension and OPEB Obligations Memorandum to the Board of Commissioners for more details. Thank you, Carl. Uh, how would you say is, uh, could the township's constituents best use the information in that segment? The committee felt that the true current and future cost of benefits had not been fully understood. We felt that it was important to have those costs computed and available to the public. Thank you again, Carl. Now let's transition over to the second major issue that we wanted to take a look at tonight, um, and that's called our OPEB, or Post-Employment Obligations Liability. Uh, Jerry, how about we start again with you with that analysis? Thanks, Bill. As you mentioned before, at $214 million, the OPEB liability is much, much bigger. Let's take a look at why. First, let me explain what OPEB is. OPEB stands for Other Post-Employment Benefits. The other means other than pensions. The main other benefit is retiree health care. Radnor provides health insurance for its unionized employees after retirement and fully pays the insurance premium. Radnor provided a similar benefit for non-union employees, but only for those who were hired before January 1, 1990. There is also a very small component of OPEB for life insurance. No funds have been set aside while an employee was active to pay for those costs during retirement. This is called pay-as-you-go, so that the taxpayers who benefited from the services of today's retirees we're relying on future taxpayers to pay the retirees' health care. Likewise, we're relying on future taxpayers to pay the retirement health care costs of current employees. There is no law requiring that these future benefits be funded currently, and as Bob mentioned in the introduction, only since 2008 has there been an accounting requirement to compute and report this liability. Now let's take a look again at the life cycle charts. This illustration shows the pay-as-you-go model with the same new hire police officer we looked at earlier. There are no funds set aside during the officer's 25-year career from 2012 to 2037. However, to be eligible for retirement health care benefits, the officer must stay employed by Radnor Township until normal retirement in 2037 or disability retirement. Leaving employment with the township before retirement would totally forfeit this benefit. Once retired, the former officer, spouse, and dependents are provided with comprehensive health care coverage according to the plan in place at the time of the officer's retirement. The actuarially projected costs are shown on the chart, again in future dollars. But unlike the pension, where the dollar amount of the benefit is fixed for life, the cost of providing retirement health care will grow over time at the rate of health care inflation. One change does occur at age 65 when the retiree is required to enroll in Medicare and Radner's plan becomes secondary. The insurance premium costs drop substantially, but are still not immaterial. 
As shown in the chart, the expected cost in future dollars for this one employee and his or her dependents is projected to be over $6 million. This is why the liability for OPEB is so large. Now let's look at how actuarially this liability would be funded during employment. To fund this benefit during employment, $1.8 million would need to be accumulated for this one officer by 2037, which would require $26,674 per year for 25 years to be put into a fund, which would also receive investment returns. No further contributions would be required by the township after retirement. However, the township would retain the risk that this projected funding was insufficient and would possibly need to supplement these funds in that case. As seen in the pensions illustrations, that cost could be substantial. Next, let's look at a civilian example. The model is the same, but there are a few differences that have very large cost impacts. First, the civilian employee cannot retire until age 62 versus 50 for the police officer. This means there are only three of those very expensive years until age 65 when Medicare comes into play, not 15 years. Second, only the employee and not spouse or dependents are covered for those civilian employees hired after January 1st, 1990. Third, the funding contribution is done over 30 years. Taking all those factors into account yields an annual payment of $6,990. So, as we did before, let's look at the costs of this benefit to the township in total and the impact on the budget and taxes. The red line illustrates the pay-as-you-go model, but with one very important note. This is the projected cost, but only considering those already retired or employed by the township today, or more specifically, as of January 1st, 2012, the date of the last actuarial valuation. If future employees were included, the red line would just continue to grow off the chart. And as you can see, under our current funding model, OPEB costs will rise significantly over the next 25 years. Now let's look at the pre-funding model as shown on the green line. Because funds have not been set aside to date, and the illustrations we just looked at gave you an idea of the amounts that actuarially should have been set aside, there is an unfunded liability of $53 million. There is no way the township could come up with $53 million today. So an amortization of that cost over 30 years is computed. On top of that is another normal cost. We're putting aside funds annually, as we saw in the life cycle illustrations, but only for today's employees, again, not for future hires. Following the green line shows an immediate huge increase in OPEB costs, which would then gradually diminish over 30 years, and then at that point be fully funded, as long as all the actuarial assumptions held, and again, only for current employees and retirees. Under the pay-as-you-go model, which we are following today, the 2013 budget includes $1.8 million to pay retiree health care premiums for the 95 retirees receiving coverage. To put this in perspective, this is equivalent to 15% of the total tax collected in real estate tax. To switch to the pre-funded model would require an immediate incremental cost of $2.8 million, which is equivalent to an immediate tax increase of 24%. Thanks again, Jerry. Uh, now we'll have Carl take a look at the market comparisons uh, that the CARFAC did as part of this project relative to the uh, post-employment benefits segment. Thanks, Bill. Similar to looking at the pension problem, CARFAC worked with Radner staff and our outside professionals to conduct a market assessment of how Radner's post-employment health care plans compared with other townships. The most significant items are the following. First, since post-employment health care is not regulated by the state as pensions are, obtaining market analysis is more cumbersome and the results are more varied. To help overcome this issue, the committee used information from the Delaware Valley Health Insurance Trust, in which Radnor Township participates to purchase health care for its active and retired employees. The health trust includes 91 public entities, which cover nearly 10,000 employees and their dependents. This provides an excellent representation of the Greater Philadelphia Public Employee Health Care Market. To start, we asked the Health Insurance Trust to provide a market analysis of the number of members who offer post-employment health care. As noted in the pie chart, Radnor Township is only one of the 9% of members who offer post-employment health care to both police and civilian retirees, while 13% only offer it to police 
and 78 percent do not offer any post-employment health care benefits at all. Then we wanted to take a look at some of our neighboring communities as well as other similarly sized communities in the area to see how Radnor compared in terms of the magnitude of their unfunded liabilities. Again, as noted by the actuarial unfunded liability comparison bar chart, Radnor, with over $50 million in unfunded post-retirement health care liabilities, is carrying the highest unfunded obligation of those communities surveyed, with several of the communities having no post-employment health care obligation liabilities. This speaks to two areas of concern that should be analyzed and addressed by Radnor Township. First, Radnor's post-employment health care benefits are far more generous than other townships. We know this to be true already based upon the 78% of communities who don't offer any post-employment health care. Second, that Radnor Township has little to no dedicated savings set aside for the purpose of funding this obligation. While there are many changes to consider in managing this liability, CARFAC has narrowed its recommendations down to these three key considerations. First, limit the benefit to only include the years between retirement and Medicare age, currently 65. As people live longer and longer, the cost to provide health care is growing exponentially. This adjustment would still provide health care to retirees while limiting the township's long-term exposure. Second, limit coverage to the retiree only and require retirees to purchase additional coverage for dependents and spouses if needed. And third, require contribution from employees to offset the costs. Similar to pensions, employee contributions would help offset a portion of the township expense while bringing employee buy-in to the program. Please refer to the written Township Pension and OPEB Obligations Memo to the Board of Commissioners for more details. Finally, to wrap up the presentation, CARFAC wanted to provide the board with some immediate actions to consider, a couple of which we understand that the board has already implemented. One, continue hiring freeze. As discussed in this presentation, and since hiring an employee today immediately obligates the township to a 60 to 70 year commitment, the township should work with the unionized employees and bring the benefit structure and associated expense obligations more in line with market levels. Two, continue to audit retiree benefits. It came to the Carfax attention that for a period of time, the township was not actively auditing the payout of benefits, which resulted in the township overpaying for health care, pension benefits, and other items. Benefit management must be tightly controlled by the township to ensure that the township is only paying for what is required and appropriate. Third, convert retirees to present day health plan. As noted, Currently, retirees are locked in to the health plan as it existed at the time of their retirement. Consequently, the township is now managing approximately 20 different health care plans, many of which have benefit structures that are very costly, including plans with no copays and no deductibles. Analysis with the health insurance trusts suggests that significant annual savings could be obtained by negotiating an agreement with current retirees to bring them all into the current active health care plan. Fourth, engage state reps. The township is limited in what it can do to manage benefit levels as a result of state law or the absence of state law as it pertains to post-retirement health care. CARFAC is recommending that the township advocate to its representatives to press for change at the state level that will allow municipalities to better manage pension and post-employment health care. This is most critical as it pertains to police pension benefits. Provide ongoing commissioner, employee, and citizen education. As we noted earlier, part of the reason the township is in this position is due to the lack of full understanding and disclosure of the cost associated with benefits being promised to township employees. The township has come a long way in the past 24 months in terms of bringing these issues to light, beginning with the work of the CB PAC in 2010 the public meetings dedicated to this topic in February and May of 2012, and now this CARFAC presentation and report in late 2012. However, the township must continue to provide education for the commissioners, employees, and citizens on the implication of contract decisions and the short and long-term financial impacts of those decisions. All right, thank you, Carl. So uh, now let's bring back uh, all of the CARFAC members into the discussion. Uh, when we first started the presentation, we, uh, we mentioned that 
Uh, the primary audience, audiences we are trying to reach included the Board of Commissioners, the employees, and the residents. Uh, and that the goals of the presentation included making sure that we answered the board's questions and also to foster you know, public conversation and education on the topic. So as we wrap up, uh, what are the most critical points that you're hoping to leave the listeners with today? Well, because of a combination of demographic and economic factors, the cost of providing these benefits has now become a substantial and largely uncontrollable component of the township's budget, and they're projected to grow exponentially. So it's critical to put a plan in place now that is sustainable and satisfies all the township stakeholders. Since 2007, the percentage of employee benefits to total expenses has grown from 16% to 24% in 2013. Further, these percentages only include OPEB at the pay-as-you-go amount, which is millions short of fully funding that obligation. At this rate, it won't be long before Radnor risks having to cut essential services in order to pay for these benefit obligations. We will be forced to deal with this in the future. Carfax thinks it's better to begin making adjustments now while we still have flexibility. One of Radnor's greatest assets is the financial strength of the township, which allows the township to provide a level of services that makes this a place where people want to live. We want to address these unfunded liabilities and manage their growth in a thoughtful manner to ensure the long-term viability of this great community. Very good. Uh, Mark, one, one final question for you, and just to, to touch on the urgency aspect of this. Why, why, why the urgency from CARFAC with the presentation and this information? Uh, why, does it, why is it important to get this out right now? 2013 could be a momentous year for our township. Issues too pressing to ignore will demand our attention. There are opportunities to redesign that will improve our condition. If left unchecked, though, the pension and OPEB liabilities will crowd out essential services in the future. Next year, the township could begin to make adjustments that would um, begin to cut back on those liabilities or cut back on the growth rate of it. The good news is that we are becoming aware of this predicament. The commissioners are acting. People are talking. Together, we will resolve this. Thank you. On behalf of the township administration, I'd like to take a moment to thank Jim Bose, who was unable to be with us tonight for the presentation, but as I mentioned at the beginning, is really the champion behind this report and the driving force behind getting it done, uh, as well as Jerry and Mark, who participated heavily in, uh, I forget how many meetings, but the number of hours were pretty remarkable through the summer months as we put this information together. And then for Carl, too, for his input with this presentation, as well as guidance throughout the entire project. Uh, I, I continue to be um, impressed and amazed at the amount of dedicated time that these volunteer individuals put into assisting the township the way they do, and they should be thanked for that. At the same time, I'd also like to thank Bob Tate and Ben Cooper from the Finance Department, who also spent a considerable amount of time this summer uh, reaching out to other municipalities, uh, getting information on their benefit structures, all in an effort to try to put uh, this report together. So the amount of time and energy that they put into this should be commended as well, and I'd like to thank them. Uh, this, this concludes the presentation part of our taping. Uh, I would again like to reiterate that there is a written report that the CARFAC put together and submitted to the Board of Commissioners that's also available on the Township's website uh, and provides, it goes into much greater detail. So I would recommend reviewing the written report in conjunction with this presentation. Uh, and I'd like to thank you, the residents, and the Board of Commissioners, as always, for the, uh, the opportunity to serve Radnor Township. Thank you.